India is a country that is filled with over 1.2 billion souls. The population of this one country is greater than the population of all of Europe. India's population is greater than the population of North and South America combined. In fact, there are more people in India than the entire continent of Africa. According to projections by the United Nations, India will be the most populous country in the world by 2028. Of these 1.2 billion people, over 80% of them practice the Hindu religion. These people believe in many different gods, and their idols can be found throughout the country. Most villages have temples and idols where people bring their sacrifices and burn incense to their false gods. Another 13% of the population is Muslim, mainly concentrated in the northern part of the country. Less than 3% of the population of the country claims any form of Christianity. The 1.2 billion people in India are precious souls made in the image of God, but the vast majority of them do not know the true God of heaven. Unless that changes, they will pass into eternity lost and unprepared. Since the year 2000, the Willette Church of Christ in Red Boiling Springs, Tennessee, has been working to address this problem and to take the gospel to the people of India. The elders of this fine congregation have committed significant resources and manpower to carry the truth of Jesus Christ to the great nation of India. Jack Honeycutt works under the oversight of the elders to coordinate the work. His full-time job is to teach and preach, make materials available, lead mission trips, and raise funds to convert Indians to New Testament Christianity. The Willette congregation works closely with established churches and faithful Indian preachers to accomplish the work. In the next several minutes, we'll introduce you to the India work that is being done by the Willette Church of Christ. We'll also be introducing you to some of the Indian brethren who are actively working in their own country and we'll give you a glimpse into the great good that is being done. The work in India is a portrait of New Testament Christianity. It is truly a joint effort of brethren in the United States working with faithful congregations in India to spread the gospel to this incredible people. Truly the fields are white unto harvest in India. I had an opportunity uh, and an opportunity and I joined uh, to be as a dentist uh, in a college and uh, at that point I was a little bit confused. So the knowledge is not being a doctor, uh, the knowledge is not being some, uh, some the other, but I, I thought the knowledge I can acquire by being a preacher and I make many people to be in the right knowledge what God gave for us. The Church of Christ in the Andhra Pradesh state of India began in 1972. Today, there are over 430,000 New Testament Christians in that area. We're located in Rappershad of Arantuni, India. We work among the uh, tribal people in uh, Southeast India, very, very poor people. Uh, our work has been going on for the last 35 years when Brother B. Ratnam was converted by J.C. Bailey, a Canadian missionary. We believe, as you see this uh, documentary on the work in uh, India, that uh, you too will be encouraged on what God is doing in this great country. I, I'm preaching at uh, Church of Christ Rampachoravaram uh, for the last five years. Uh, m uh, prior to me, my father used to speak. So far, we have constructed um, 4,000 uh, churches and uh, uh, 
1500 preachers are now working with us and we have other social activities like uh, uh, running orphanages in different places so far we are running seven orphanages and uh, uh, we, we are running two hospitals one at Rampachodavaram and one at Tuni and we have school of preaching at Tuni also the Indian preachers are hard working and the church continues to grow at a rapid pace with native preachers baptizing around 10,000 new members each year. Each preacher at least uh, uh, oversee uh, uh, three to four congregations and it is difficult for him to reach these congregations and we cannot afford to, to buy a motorcycle and uh, the places or uh, the transportation is not suitable for that kind of uh, motorcycle. So by bicycle they go uh, villages and they reach new villages and they speak uh, to the people and thus uh, uh, they bring people to the church. Preaching and teaching are fundamental to the work of the Lord's Church in every location. During trips to India, teams teach in as many villages as they can. While many of these congregations have been blessed with church buildings, some meet in thatch-roofed huts and other primitive settings. The goal of these efforts is to supplement the work of the local evangelists in those congregations. Whenever we visit congregations, we uh, distribute Bibles in the church. Sometimes we uh, pick up some villages and we start distributing uh, the Bibles to house to house. Every year in February, Jack Hunticutt leads a team of men on a three-week campaign to the country of India. These men will go out to three or four villages each day and preach through an interpreter to people who worship idols, belong to a denomination, or are already New Testament Christians. Oftentimes, they will preach to people who have never heard of Jesus Christ or His plan of salvation. The people in India are different than people in America in that they are more willing to listen to the gospel and are more willing to change when we prove to them the Bible is truth. In February of 2014, preaching occurred in 161 villages and 931 precious souls were baptized. In the past, 80 to 85 percent of those who obey the gospel will remain faithful to the Lord. Please pray for these Christians in this tribal area to overcome all the hardships and persecutions. The Tuni School of Preaching in Andhra Pradesh opened in January 2012, beginning with five full-time students. It is a two-year school that provides in-depth studies for its students using the curriculum developed by World Video Bible School. Before graduation, students will have studied each book of the Bible, as well as other vital subjects that will help them to fulfill their ministry. Uh, right now, uh, I'm working uh, at School of Preaching, Tuni, Tuni School of Preaching, and I preach uh, to the I teach to the students at uh, Tuni School of Preaching, and I want to teach many people uh, about one true living God in my country because many of my friends uh, who are uh, an idol worshippers, I, I used to teach uh, them. Uh, starting when I went to school, I used to talk to them and discuss about uh, one God. But now I got an opportunity uh, to know that one God. And now I want to make everyone to know that one God and preach about it. As of January 2015, the Tuni School of Preaching is going great with 25 full-time students. These students, upon their graduation, will have completed more than 930 classroom hours studying the biblical text. These students receive $100 each month in support that enables them to get a Bible education. When the students graduate, after they're finished their graduation, 
they go back into their villages and they start preaching to their uh, people and they start congregations there in their villages. So some of them were already having congregations, but uh, they, they want to learn much more uh, from the word of God. So they came and joined and they learned a lot and they went back and they uh, were happy uh, to have uh, uh, knowledge from the word of God. Every year in November, Jack Hunnicutt leads a team of men and women to India in order to teach the preachers and their wives in-depth Bible topics in a lectureship-style format. This is an essential part of the work because our preachers don't have access to commentaries, dictionaries, etc. Just imagine trying to study your Bible with absolutely no outside help, without anything to help you understand what you are reading. There are many wonderful things about the work in India, but the thirst of the souls for the gospel is so impressive, and anyone who has been involved with that work can see that. Training the local native preachers is one of the greatest ways to spread the gospel and build the church. It is our responsibility as Christians to guide our brethren who are trying to spread the gospel. We in the native language, we have the deficit of uh, uh, books in our native language. Uh, hence, uh, uh, we felt that it's better to establish a printing press so that we can translate them into our native language and uh, uh, hand over them to the people, especially to the preachers and their congregations, so that uh, not one time we can teach them. Many times, whenever they read, they can uh, have the knowledge of God and uh, they can be kept in their houses and they can uh, may, may feel like a ready reckoner uh, when they come out, when they have any questions. For the last three years, uh, we've had a couple of ladies who are coming here, Lisa Holmes and Becky Honeycutt have come and prepared lessons and taught the ladies here. This year, uh, they had the privilege of teaching some of the uh, uh, young children here, prepared lessons for them. It was a great success. The women have had great success in their teaching of the preacher's wives. The preacher's wives, uh, a lot of times, will bring women with them that they're trying to convert. And so there are many baptisms that are results of the ladies' teaching here, which is fantastic. The, uh, uh, the children, uh, are being taught, but the, the good thing about it is that uh, all of the lessons that they're taught are, are put in copy and they're able to take these lessons home with them and distribute them and use them in their teaching. So it's a fantastic work for them. We hope to continue this work uh, for the near future uh, because we see great results from teaching the, uh, the preacher's wives over here. These men and their wives work every day teaching others in the tribal areas of India. They work so hard for so little. It is the least we can do to go over for two weeks and teach our brethren in depth. Please pray for these men and their wives to have success in the work that they do. We currently have several orphans and widows homes. There are approximately 720 orphans and 764 widows living in these homes. These homes will provide widows with food, clothing, and shelter. These widows will help to care for the children on a daily basis. They will teach Bible to the children and to other ladies in the villages. If not for these homes, some of these widows would starve to death. We are grateful that we can be a small help to these women. It is amazing that $10 monthly will support one of these widows. What greater thing could we do with such a small amount of money than to provide for someone who so desperately needs our help? Thank you to all the ones who sacrifice to help in this effort. I've been particularly impressed and touched with the work of the orphans homes 
going into the orphans' homes and seeing the conditions in which these orphans live, which is much better than what they came from. I guess that would represent all of their possessions. All of their possessions. Wow. But yet, there's so much yet to be improved and providing for them bedding and food, sustaining the widows that uh, they can make a little money and provide for themselves and just doing those things which show some compassion and love to the people in India, to these orphans and to these widows, is something that I believe that anyone who sees uh, this work would be impressed with and want to be a part of. I know it's touched me in a way that I cannot imagine and uh, uh, to a depth of my heart that it's, I just simply cannot put into words. I think you'll see some of these images and although pictures cannot tell the story, you'll get an impression of what we're talking about. These homes will provide these children with food, clothing, shelter, and an education. Most of these children are true orphans, with both parents being dead. These children will grow up in a spiritual environment. They will memorize scripture on a daily basis and study the Bible daily. Most of these children will become Christians by the time they are 12 to 15 years of age. These children will receive an education that most children in this part of India do not have the opportunity to receive. These children are very happy and content because they realize that they are loved and taken care of physically and spiritually. And all of this is done for $25 monthly per child. Again, thank you for providing so much for these children. By establishing this kind of orphanages, we can lead them into Lord and the Word of God. And there are instances many orphans have become Christians. And we can say that 95% of orphanages have become Christians after admitting in these orphanages. However, there are thousands more orphans and widows in India that would love to be in one of these homes but we don't have the means to take everyone in. It is through the support of brethren throughout America that makes it possible for this work to be able to care for at least a few of these orphans and widows. Hopefully in the future, this work will continue to grow and we can take in more of those that so desperately need our help. Please continue to pray for this work as we strive to obey James 1:27. The people of India suffer from numerous illnesses and diseases, thus there is a dire need for medical help. For several years we have had a medical clinic in the Tuni area that was funded by one of our preachers through an inheritance left to him. More recently, in 2001, we have through funds donated by individuals been able to open a full service hospital in Ramchadavaram. The nearest hospital is an hour and a half away, so it fills a great need in the community. Both of these facilities provide free care to anyone in need. At the hospital, five doctors see between 100 to 200 patients each day. These doctors are supported by congregations in the U.S. I appreciate the good work you guys did. Not only do the people get their physical needs met, but they are also given an opportunity to hear the gospel while they wait. They can see the Christian love and compassion and uh, uh, the way uh, we give our social, um, social help for them uh, in their health also. That's the reason sometimes they show interest. They want to know about God and there are instances uh, people came to know God by coming to these hospitals and they have become Christians. There is always a great need for money to purchase medicines. Though we have congregations who support the doctors, we don't have designated monthly support for medicines. These people in, make very many sacrifices in trying to spread the gospel in this area. We've been very, very blessed in converting thousands of people in this area to the gospel. Many Hindus and denominational people have been uh, converted to the New Testament church and are now Christians because of the efforts of these folks in this area. There's a great need in India. There's a great work to be done. There are many, many, many souls 
who need the gospel of Christ. They're serving idols. They're serving the creations of their hands. They're starving. They need the Lord. They need you and me to get involved and to make a difference. The church in India is at primary level. They need all kinds of support from all, uh, uh, all corners. Um, they have enthusiasm to spread the gospel of God, Christ, uh, but they don't have means uh, to go to, uh, to reach the congregations. So if we uh, help them by providing this kind of tools uh, to them and also uh, help them by uh, giving uh, their children good education, uh, ch their children good uh, taking care of their children or the, uh, their health, they'll definitely uh, focus on the preaching and uh, they'll reach out more congregations. After seeing the in-depth work uh, going on in India, we believe that uh, you would uh, not only be encouraged, but that you would want to help us in reaching uh, many there with the gospel. Uh, we have people that are available to do the work, but uh, we need your not only prayers, but your financial help in trying to reach these folks. Friends, souls hang in the balance. The Willette congregation is working diligently to carry the gospel to a nation that is hungry for it. But we can't do it without your help.